At Rosedon, we view safety as a value. Our people are our top priority. That is why we instill a safety culture that goes beyond the workplace and into our homes each and every day. Whether on a job site, in the warehouse, or in an office, we want to make sure that our employees are working their safest so they can return home each and every day safe and sound. Falls are the leading cause of death in the construction industry, and fatal falls from ladders account for nearly a quarter of those fatalities. 15% of those ladder fatalities occur from a height of 10 feet or less. In less than 60 seconds, an individual can choose to wear proper PPE, check their surroundings, or ensure that their fall prevention harness is secure. Failure to do so can result in a fall, injury, or even worse, death. Injuries affect every aspect of our lives, whether it's going to work, interacting with loved ones, or simply completing daily tasks. That is why we are creating this video today to bring fall prevention awareness to each and every one of us to make sure that we understand what it looks like for a human to fall from 12 or 20 feet and the injuries that could be sustained. Our hope is that through this video, you recognize that it only takes 60 seconds to change your life for the better or for the worse. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through the real life simulation of what it would look like to fall at 12 feet and 20 feet. You may be asking, how are we gonna make this happen? Well, first, we got ballistics dummies from Ballistics Dummies Labs that are 95% recreations of real life people. They have bones, they have organs, and they will bleed if an injury is to occur upon them. From there, we partnered with our partners in safety over at Sunbelt Rentals to give us two scissor lifts. One will be used as a filming platform, and the second one will be used to show exactly what 20 feet looks like on a job site. Two of the most frequent objects our employees are using are scissor lifts and ladders, and that's what we're gonna be showing today. Now, ladders aren't just a typical construction item, they're an everyday household item. So this isn't just a construction safety awareness video, this is an everyday safety awareness video. We're gonna be dropping them from 12 to 20 feet, including eight cameras at a 100 degree angle of getting every single option we can when seeing what a fall would look like. Finally, we're gonna be bringing in a doctor to conduct a live autopsy to show what kind of damage is done to the ballistics dummy and what that would look like in a real person, including recovery time, if they could survive, and finally, what their day-to-day -day would look like post-injury. We wanna thank you guys for watching this video and let's get into it. Let's show you how this will be created. Before we set up the drop, again, we wanna preface that this experiment is to simulate a real life scenario. However, we are not gonna be 100% accurate to what exactly would happen if a person were to fall due to a variety of reasons. For example, we are using ballistics dummies. We're orienting the fall from a standing position and conducting the experiment in a controlled setting. Now, to set up the drop, let's have a basic physics lesson. The first drop will be done at 20 feet to replicate working from a scissor lift. To calculate this, we're going to take a look at Newton's three laws of motion, specifically the second and third. The second law is force equals mass times acceleration. The third law is for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The reason we need to know this is we first need to find the rate of speed in which the bodies fall, then the deceleration, and finally deformation which will then show us the force upon impact. Deceleration is a reduction in speed or rate, and deformation is the action or process of changing in shape or distorting, especially through the application of pressure, aka the body pressing down on the floor when it hits. A body when falling is essentially a device to transfer energy from the fall to the ground. The ballistics dummies each weigh 240 pounds, and the speed in which any object falls is 9.8 meters per second squared, or 32.17 feet per second squared, at any height or weight thanks to Earth's gravity, not including wind resistance or aerodynamics. The feet per second squared essentially means that within the first second, the body will travel 32.17 feet per second. Then, after another second has passed, the body would then be traveling at 64.34 feet per second, multiplying its rate of speed each second, which means without factoring in wind resistance or going full-blown rocket science, it can take the human body anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds to reach terminal velocity of 120 miles per hour. Terminal velocity is the constant speed that a freely falling object eventually reaches when the resistance of the medium 
through which it is falling prevents further acceleration. Essentially, it is the max speed in which an individual could free fall. This doesn't play a factor in today's experiment, but to keep it in context of construction, if you were to fall off any building above five stories, there's a strong chance you will be reaching terminal velocity of 120 miles per hour. Let's now watch the first drop occur at 20 feet. In this experiment, it took the ballistics dummy 1.12 seconds traveling at a speed of 24.45 miles per hour to hit the ground from 20 feet, in which it transferred upon impact 38,400 pounds of force onto the head, which was the first body part to hit the ground. With all that force upon impact, a human body experiences deformation or a change in shape. For humans, it can be anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch. But when all the pressure is being applied onto a human, our bodies begin to squish. Within that change is where all that energy is being transferred from gravity to our body to the ground. Now, the Journal of Neurosurgery conducted a study on effectiveness of bike helmets and how a skull reacts to impact or crushing forces. What they found was an average skull only needs 100 to 200 pounds of force to be fractured without any form of head protection. That means before we even get to Dr. Greg Sorensen's breakdown, we know through physics that it is not going to end well for this dummy. I think we, we can start to make it easy for all of us to follow and learn from. We start at the top and go down. Okay. I saw impact on the head mm -hmm. to witness the camera is, is far away. So yeah. he may have hit directly on the camera. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's going to be difficult to see any type of a, you know, any type of a, uh, a fracture in the skull because of the of the presentation, but mm -hmm. the concussion had to have been probably fatal. Um, the neck somehow, at least in this representation, mm -hmm. may have not been completely fractured. However, the soft tissues mm -hmm. are torn in the posterior side of the neck. So probably the force on the head would have then also, in addition to the concussion, uh, fracture of the cervical spine. Okay. Another cause of death. So, so far two. two. Um, the right arm is completely torn asunder from mm -hmm. the, the uh, thorax. Yeah. So that would be complete disruption of all of the four ligaments of the shoulder. Probably 16 of the ligaments surrounding the scapula are also torn. Mm -hmm. The uh, right elbow in here, that looks like the, the Bones may be intact. I don't see obvious fractures, mm -hmm. but certainly the mechanism of the injury is going to have probably completely reversed yeah. the uh, normal uh, flexion of the elbow. So completely ruining mm -hmm. uh, the elbow, probably uh, permanently. Okay. Uh, we moving down. We I, <laughs> there. There's plenty of uh, simulated blood that's mm -hmm. escaped from the at least the thorax, possibly the abdomen. I can't really see where the, uh, oh, here, the, the, so it came right out of the chest. So his sternum is, sternum is actually exposed. Mm -hmm. The skin over the thorax has completely split open. So this probably came directly from the heart. Okay. Cause of death number three. Okay. Um, the internal organs look to be completely surrounded by blood. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say what the damage is to them because they're somewhat protected in the abdominal cavity, mm -hmm. which didn't get the direct blow. After both drops, we will go into a mock autopsy with Dr. Sorensen to see what internal damage was done to the ballistics dummy. We do this because as we mentioned earlier, these dummies are not exact replicas of the human body. And that is why we have Dr. Sorensen on scene to humanize the whole event and relate it back to real life. Let's look now at our 12 foot drop, which is a common height for our employees to be working on ladders. We align the body to fall from where the final safe step on a ladder is, which is the second rung from the top, regardless of the height of the ladder. Let's watch this drop now. Applying the same formula as we did in the first fall, we can see that the force upon impact will be slightly less, although still fatal, at 34,700 pounds of force. 
the body traveled at 18.93 miles per hour and hit the ground in 0.86 seconds. Which with that amount of force, again, the Journal of Neurosurgery says it only takes 100 to 200 pounds of force to fracture a skull. So even at a 12 foot drop, we are well above the range for a fracture to occur, especially landing head first. It's a little bit different of a fall. He's face down this time. What are we looking at? It looked to me from my vantage point that the uh, <clears throat> area of impact on this individual would have been either the forehead, I think probably the forehead or even the face. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a little bit of breakage right in here. Um, so I think that, right. that supports your indication right there. So I, I think the point of impact is very close to the forehead. Mm -hmm. So as, and this is only a 12 foot fall, but my guess is that, that would have been incompatible with life. Mm -hmm. I think it, it would have actually killed him landing on an, on an unprotected uh, skull mm -hmm. onto concrete. And if this employee was wearing a hard hat, like most of our employees do whenever working, would that have saved him at all? Or would it been the same likely cause of death most likely? Or it might have mitigated the amount of force that was actually transmitted to the skull, mm -hmm. but the concussion or the injury to the brain would have been almost the same. So, so when the brain slaps against the back of the skull and then slaps against the front of the skull, mm -hmm. that's the concussion. He also might have severed his spinal cord yeah. with the, I'm sure we'll see it when we look at the film, mm -hmm. but if your face hits, it, then it's gonna like whiplash, it's gonna go backwards. Gotcha. So that could, um, and now addressing the, the, the source of the blood, mm -hmm. that's a very good question. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's on the side of the liver. It's very close to where the liver might be. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's probably from the liver. So there's a good chance that the 12th rib here mm -hmm. actually lacerated the liver. Okay. And uh, that, might, that might not be a cause of death, but if, if unnoted, mm -hmm. then, yeah. then of course it, it would be eventually. Will that cause some form of internal bleeding then? Or what, what kind of injury would be if, that, like you said, it punctured the liver? So if the rib punctured the liver, lacerated the liver, yeah, so that would be internal bleeding because okay. the bleeding is from its source inside the mm -hmm. body. Um, as to how fast it would happen, if it happened to also hit a vessel, a blood vessel mm -hmm. that's providing blood to the liver, the hepatic artery, then now you've lacerated a, a very important uh, artery that's going to continue to spew blood okay. and, and ultimately uh, kill him. Okay. We can't see the heart mm -hmm. um, without rolling him over. Yeah. And otherwise, I, I think, you know, the, the limbs, all four limbs came out virtually unscathed. Yeah. I mean, the head mm -hmm. took the trauma. Okay. So I, I think this was also a fatal, a fatal fall, mm -hmm. albeit from only 12 feet. Yeah. Before we go into the mock autopsy, we do want to acknowledge the lack of PPE in this video regarding the ballistics dummies. We are addressing what it would look like if someone were to free fall from a scissor lift or ladder. Now we have no form of a fall arrest harness for ladders, so that wouldn't change anything with a ladder fall. But with a scissor lift at 20 feet, a fall arrest system could save someone's life. The U.S. Department of Labor recently released information regarding fall prevention. It showed that depending on the harness and lanyard length used, a fall arrest harness could use some time or length to fully activate. To ensure you know what is being used on your job, ask your safety coordinator and stay informed on how to use and operate the fall arrest system in place. Another piece of PPE we would like to mention is hard hats. Hard hats are a necessity on every job site regardless of what work is being done. However, traditional hard hats do not have a chin strap or a way to secure it during a fall or if a worker were to flip upside down. There are hard hats with chin straps that are being used more and more in the industry that would stay secure in event of a fall, but they are not utilized on every job site. Looking back at the Journal of Neurosurgery's experiment of how much force a human skull can withstand with or without a helmet, they found that a skull with proper head protection conferred up to an 87% reduction, meaning a skull could take much more of an impact before it were to fracture. However, there is always the right PPE for the right job. A hard hat isn't a replacement for a fall arrest harness but it does not diminish how much a hard hat has the possibility to save someone's life. 
If you are ever curious about what PPE is right for your job, please do not hesitate to reach out to the safety personnel on site or in the office. Taking the extra time to double check your PPE and your surroundings could be the difference between life and death. With that in the back of our minds, let's follow up with our doctor in the mock autopsy to see what other damage was done to these ballistics dummies. So the initial fall, as we recall, mm -hmm. um, was onto the superior posterior part of the head, or we call the crown of the head, or, mm -hmm. and would have resulted in, in all likelihood, a, a skull fracture, potentially an open skull fracture where the skull protrudes out of the scalp. Yeah. So incompatible with life, cause of death number one. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously with a fracture, it comes a concussion. So that's when the brain slaps against either the back or the front wall first of the skull, and then the front or the back wall after that. And that can, can cause death in and of itself. And then what's next? And we can't really discern what else would have happened. But again, in this kind of a fall, I think the pressure would have been directly onto the skull and then transmitted right to the neck. Mm -hmm. We actually... In the cervical spine, that's the top part of the spine, there are vertebrae up there, seven of them, and we actually have a broken vertebrae right here that is came from the highest part of the cervical spine. Mm -hmm. Th that might or might not have actually come out, mm -hmm. and, and if so, um, the, the trauma that caused that spinal fracture uh, would probably be enough to sever the spinal cord, and that can cause instant paralysis and potentially death. Okay. Then we see the limbs, so that this mm -hmm. is the, the uh, accident where the entire right upper extremity was just torn off of the torso. Mm -hmm. It's as if a shark, a great white shark, <laughs> just took it in its mouth and ripped it off. Mm -hmm. So that ha can only happen with severe um, axial trauma. It's called along the plane of the bone. It would have in addition to ripping all four ligaments, which make up the rotator cuff that mm -hmm. we've all heard about, there's an axillary artery right in here that uh, provides blood to the entire arm and forearm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that didn't survive the fall either. Yeah. And that's a large enough vessel, probably about the caliber of this pen, that you could bleed out through it, okay. just as if you were receiving a transfusion, mm -hmm. except it's going full speed. And we know Cause of death number three. Okay. So we're at three, uh, three reasons for death already. So what's next? That's correct. <laughs> yeah. So we had the blunt force to the head mm -hmm. um, causing a, a severe skull fracture and ble potentially bleeding within the brain. And we had concussion, which if, if severe enough can cause death. Mm -hmm. And we had the uh, axillary artery being completely torn and blood bleeding out is what you would call that, mm -hmm. through that wound. Got better. Perfect. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and, and start a dissection and see if we can ascertain what organs were um, damaged or even potentially rendered useless um, in such a fall. Just to give more exposure, we'll start kind of mid-pubic, uh, not quite pubic area, but deep abdominal area. So the abdominal organs, liver, spleen, kidneys, they are not as at all well protected. So our attempt was to expose some of the organs mm -hmm. that are within the abdominal cavity. Yeah. So we can see a tip of the liver uh, right under, on your side, Yeah. Uh, up high on your side, kind okay. of right in here, mm -hmm. right after another broken rib okay. uh, fragment. Okay. So that the liver is represented by this right here. Gotcha. It would, in this case, have, have been lacerated severely by this broken rib. Yeah. So the liver mm -hmm. was toast. Liver is toast, yeah. okay. And that would be due to the the fractured rib that then punctured the liver? Precisely. Okay. Right under the left lower anterior rib cage yeah. is the spleen. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to see. The spleen can continue to hemorrhage internally. Mm -hmm. You know, again, the, the, uh, the, the violent nature of this fall, the fact that the trauma didn't occur slowly, but it occurred instantaneously and either by direct force or indirect force um, was transmitted to multiple parts of the body. <laughs> Both legs or lower extremities are severed at the junction of the thigh with the leg, which is the knee. 
and he is designed to flex, period. In this case, it went beyond that and actually ripped both legs mm -hmm. off of the thighs at the knee. Mm -hmm. That would cause inst uh, loss of blood over a minute, less than a minute, probably that would result in death. Mm -hmm. uh, so from this 20 foot fall altogether, it was unlikely to really survive the fall, correct? Correct. And if you were to survive the fall, the road to recovery would be immeasurable because we don't know exactly what kind of mental, um, you know, mental problems that may have happened, as well as the physical damage that was done to the body. Correct. So now that we've gone through what a 20 foot drop would look like, let's take a look at the 12 foot drop and see if an individual could survive or what kind of injuries they sustained from that drop. So now that we're looking at the 12 foot fall, which it, on paper should be a little bit less, but we really don't know until we get into it. So why don't we get started with the head? What are we looking at up there? So it's, as you point out, Connor, that <clears throat> the impact from 12 feet is obviously less than the impact from 20 feet. However, the point of impact is going to make a, a tremendous difference. In this case, with a 12 foot fall, we can actually see right in this triangle here mm -hmm. where the camera was mounted on the forehead. And it was a, a pretty much a direct impact on the camera, which obviously in a real setting would not have been on a camera, but right on, a, fortunately, a very strong part of the skull, but not a part of the skull that's strong enough to withstand a fall from 20 feet. As you pointed out, Connor, with a fall from 12 feet, it is a lesser uh, speed at impact and uh, <clears throat> force of impact, but it's still a very, it's, it's a great distance through which to fall. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, on this uh, dummy, we can actually see the representation of a scalp laceration right over the, the, the forehead, pretty much at the hairline. Looking at the camera afterwards, the condition of the, of the skull would have been even worse. Mm -hmm. So this would, even though it, in this case, didn't uh, fracture the skull, I, I think falling from 12 feet directly on your head would fracture the skull of most humans. Mm -hmm. That may cause instantaneous death right there. Okay. From just the severity of the concussion, um, it's just too se severe of a neurologic injury to withstand, even though you don't see blood. Many people have survived a 12-foot fall as kids or as young adults doing silly things. Mm -hmm. But if you land on your head without any protective headgear, uh, no, you're, you're not going to survive, in okay. my opinion. Um, okay, so looking now at the neck, what are we seeing there? Because you were saying the neck is connected to the brain. Obviously, if something happened in the brain, something may have you know trickled down into the spine, or what are we looking there? Right. No, that's a very good point. So uh, in, the, in this test the, and, and demonstration, the head was actually the first point of impact. Mm -hmm. But I think when we, we look at the slow motion in detail, the, the neck may have flexed backwards or may have flexed forward, in either case, well beyond what our cervical spine, even as an infant, is capable of doing. Mm -hmm. So that rapid twisting like that, or flexion or extension, can rip the spinal cord in half, which mm -hmm. is instant death, or at a minimum, contuse it and potentially rip the uh, vertebral arteries that are running right up alongside it. So there's another potential cause of death, two causes of death, mm -hmm. potentially. So I think what we're seeing in, is as we look down into the organs which are simulated mm -hmm. is prob probably, uh, again, liver laceration and or spleen. So the objective here in making the incision into the abdom abdomen through the abdominal musculature, abdominal wall, mm -hmm. and eventually into the abdominal cavity is to actually get a look at the organs and see what the indirect force caused. It was not direct force as it was for the head and probably for the, the uh, hands and, and, and the feet. Mm -hmm. But this was indirect force. So I think what we're seeing again is the liver, Connor. Okay. The, the liver was damaged. So probably this liver was just contused mm -hmm. or bruised. And But that, because of the nature of the thing, we've all seen liver, mm -hmm. it will just exude blood um, that's being pumped into it. And, but others than that, I, I didn't see any. The spleen looked fine. So we're seeing a lot less internal damage compared to the 20-foot drop. Is that just because of the momentum, or is it really just a, a representation of the difference between 12 and 20 feet? And those may be the same thing. Mm -hmm. That falling from that extra eight feet up is mm -hmm. going to give you that much more 
uh, velocity, which then translates into force, newtons of force of impact, all being channeled through one one part of your body initially, and then secondarily, I think when the shoulders hit or the chest hit, and then the arms splayed out. So all of them are absorbing direct force as well. And, and though we aren't seeing as much internal injury, I do want to note again, we have said that this is a fatal fall just because the head and neck injuries alone would be enough to sustain a fatal accident. I believe it would be. As you can see from this experiment, falls from any height can result in life-changing injury or even worse, death. No matter what industry you're working in, whether it's construction, mining, manufacturing, roofing, or simply putting a light bulb in your own home, Falls can be life-changing and can even result in death, no matter what height or what situation. We encourage you to share this video not only with your employees, but with your friends and family or anyone you think could be susceptible to a fall. Our goal from this video is to bring awareness to fall prevention and how to make sure that we are working at our absolute safest every single day. Finally, I would like to thank our Rosen and personnel and our partnering vendors for making this video possible. Without their hard work, we couldn't be spreading the message of fall awareness and fall prevention. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And again, it only takes 60 seconds to ensure that your life is safe and you are operating with proper PPE and proper fall protection. Thank you.